What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be having a deep look at the tactical rule set in Infinite Warfare. I'm going to be looking at the health settings, as well as the headshot multipliers, because those are different, the flinch, basically everything you need to know about the tactical rule set. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so currently we only have Tactical Team Deathmatch, but I could see potentially in the future we might end up getting some more Tactical Modes added to the game. I hope we do at least, because I do enjoy myself every now and then going back and playing this Boots on the Ground mode. So with this mode, the first thing to know is it is Boots on the Ground, so there is no double jumping or anything along those lines. But you can still wall run, and you can still slide, and you still have a boost meter. Now this boost meter is just used for wall running and sliding, and that's one of the changes as well. When you're actively wall running, it will deplete your boost meter. Whereas in regular modes, your boost meter will not be depleted when you're wall running. Now I should also point out that if you're using Synaptic's propulsion trait, it does still help replenish that boost meter. So a lot of people say that propulsion is completely useless in this mode, and while it's a lot less useful than in other modes, it still is going to help you if you're somebody that likes to slide around a lot or use a lot of wall runs in Tactical Team Deathmatch. Moving on to the next big change with Tactical, this is the flinch. The flinch in Tactical modes is much higher than in regular modes, and this makes the Marksman perk much more viable because it helps reduce that flinch and keep you on target. So now that we've got those first two aspects covered that were fairly obvious to most people that have ever played Tactical, which I'm sure is a lot of you guys, let's get into the good stuff. This is the health and headshot multiplier settings. So the health settings have been changed for Tactical TDM. You now have 70 health in this mode, as opposed to a regular 100 health in core modes and 30 health in hardcore modes. And what this 70 health setting means in Tactical is when you have a gun that would normally be a four shot kill in core game modes, it's now going to be a three shot kill within what would have been a four shot kill in core game modes. Now the issue with this comes from when you look at the guns that are normally a three shot kill in core game modes because they will still be a three shot kill in Tactical Team Deathmatch, excluding the epic variant of the R3K, which is the Wrecked. That will be a two shot kill within its normal three shot kill range because it does 35 damage, whereas all the other three shot kill weapons have a 34 damage range. So this is where some of the weapon balance kind of goes out the window with Tactical Modes, because something like a Volk compared to an NV4 in this, they're both going to take three shots to kill, but the Volk has a lot of downsides built into it so that it doesn't become completely overpowered in core game modes because you can't have a three shot kill weapon that's just as good in every category as its four shot kill counterparts. So generally, if we're just looking at body shots, if you're playing tactical modes, you're better off using guns that would normally be a four shot kill in core game modes rather than the ones that would normally be a three shot kill in core game modes. But this completely changes when we start looking at headshots because we have increased headshot multipliers in tactical modes. And I've finally been able to pinpoint this exact multiplier after a lot of testing because now we can actually test it in custom games. This multiplier without Faraday Slug or Hollow Point is going to be 2.1, which is significantly better than the standard headshot multiplier of 1.1. So going for headshots in this mode is absolutely going to be beneficial for you. And that's why tactical modes are such good modes for going for headshots, because first off you get that crazy headshot multiplier, and second, people aren't going to be boost jumping all over the place, so you can generally just keep your sights up at head level, and that head level is not going to be changing too significantly in most gunfights. So a little bit earlier I was talking about how weapon balance gets kind of thrown out the window for those regular three-shot kill guns, because there's still going to be a three-shot kill. Headshots are where they gain the advantage in tactical. Without adding Faraday Slug or Hollow Point, any weapon that is normally going to be a three-shot kill in core modes, within that range... In Tactical Team Deathmatch, it's going to be a one-shot headshot. So this means if you're using something like the R3K, or the RAW, or the EMC, or the Volk, if you're using those in Tactical Team Deathmatch, you don't need to add Faraday Slug or Hollow Point on these guns, and you'll still be getting one-shot headshots, as long as you're staying within its range that it would normally be a three-shot kill. So that's the advantage they gain, but just know if you are using a gun that would normally be a four-shot kill in core modes, all you have to do is add Hollow Point or Faraday Slug, and it will now turn it into a one-shot headshot because the Faraday Slug slash Hollow Point multiplier in tactical modes is actually 2.35 instead of the normal 1.35 in core game modes. So I'll just put a little list on the screen here of the guns that don't necessarily need that Hollow Point or Faraday Slug to get a one-shot headshot, as well as the guns that will benefit from that, which is actually going to be most of the fully automatic guns in the game so you guys can just have a look for yourself. Now keep in mind, I'm not saying these guns are gonna be a one-shot headshot at every range, 
I'm just saying that they will have a one-shot headshot range. Now, one more thing I wanted to mention with Tactical Team Deathmatch, this is sniper rifles. They don't behave like everything else. They don't follow the same rules with like the 70 health and everything along those lines. From what I can tell, they get some sort of a negative multiplier that essentially cancels out any of the health settings. So what I mean by this is sniper rifles will have the same one-shot kill areas in Tactical Team Deathmatch as they do in core game modes. So with the KBS longbow, for instance, this is going to be a one shot from the waist up. So if you shoot somebody in the leg with the KBS longbow in core game modes, you get a hit marker and in tactical, you will also get a hit marker. Also, this is really difficult to test, but with shotguns, it appears they've done something very similar where you get the exact same kill ranges with the shotguns. Like I said, though, this is difficult to test with any sort of certainty, but it appears that that is the case. So there we have it. That's going to wrap it up for today's relatively quick video. I wanted to finally get those numbers out to you guys now that I finally was able to test them in custom games. I know it might be a little bit late for this one. It's not like there's much hype surrounding Tactical at the moment, but I've had people asking about this and I thought it was finally time to share it. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.